Well, hello everybody. Today is Sunday night. It is um, October the 22nd. No, it's October the 20th. <laughs> it's the 20th. And so tomorrow, um, several of us leave on the Destination Bread cruise. Me and Marie Barfield, Janet Holloway, and I was just talking to Jana on here who took the money. And so they're going to the Grand Canyon. And so we're so excited and I can't wait to tell you all, all about it next week. And so we leave really early in the morning. So uh, we may have just a little bit shorter call. So you know, I tell y'all every week that I just kind of get confirmation about what I'm supposed to talk about, and it always comes. I mean, like every single week, I don't have to worry about it because the Lord drops something in me that I feel like I need to talk to y'all about. And this week, it was like two or three times, and it was the same subject. I'm like, okay, that's what I want to talk on. And so, um, I don't know, some of you follow me on Facebook, but this week, um, I, I found on one of my old websites that I don't even use anymore for my unit where I had written out my little story about Mary Kay, like how I joined and what I did. And, um, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to post this uh, because I did a brand new marketing video. You guys are welcome to use it, but I didn't really go into my whole story. It was more generic about me and more about Mary Kay, the company, and which is, is what I wanted it to be. But I thought, I'm just going to post this my little story. And, you know, all of you are writing your story with Mary Kay. And whether you are just starting or whether you've been in a long time, you're writing your story. And so, you know, you want to you want to kind of be thinking about how you can tell your story in a concise way, in like, a you know, a couple paragraphs at every party at every interview so people can get to know a little bit more about you and where you come from in your story. And you also need to be able to tell Mary Kay's story. And so um, the subject tonight is actually the golden rule. And I have been reading through the Bible this year and um, I, I read through uh, Matthew, um, Mark, and I'm on Luke. And so I saw it in there. I'm like, oh, there's the golden rule. And then the week before that, I had found this little marble that Mary Kay gave us. They gave to all the new directors and it said, had about the golden rule. And I believe I showed it here at the Boss Babe call a couple weeks ago. If I didn't, I could not remember if I did or didn't. But anyway, and then what, you know, I go to church tonight, yeah, this morning and the subject was on the golden rule. I'm like, well, there you go. So we're going to talk about that just a little bit. And Mary Kay thought it was so important. So, but that, and also just your story and knowing Mary Kay's story. Okay. So first of all, I, I just looked up the golden rule on, on the internet with Mary Kay. And I came across this article that showed Mary Kay's story, very concise. And so I'm going to read it to you and I'll post later the website on this because I think it's just a quick easy way I mean you you definitely want to read her whole autobiography if you haven't done that but I think some of you don't know Mary Kay's story especially if you're kind of new you're like yeah I need to read that one day and it's important to know where you came from because then you can kind of see how far you've been and where you're where we're going okay so I want to read this to you this article is was written um, in 2016 by a guy named Mike Clayton, and he has this little website called Management Pocketbooks, and it's the, the subject is Mary Kay Ash Golden Rule, okay? So I'm just going to read it to you. It says, the scale of the organization that Mary Kay Ash built is impressive. Wanting to test some of the wild figures I found on the web, I went to the Mary Kay website for their own facts and found the biggest number yet but we have to treat that as authoritative. In their words, 3.5 million people worldwide are Mary Kay independent beauty consultants. The wholesale, not retail, sales are $4 billion per year. And so here's a short biography, just four paragraphs on Mary Kay, okay? Mary Catherine Wagner, did y'all know that her uh, middle name was Catherine? Spell with a K. Uh, Mary Catherine Wagner was born 1918 in 1918 and grew up in Houston, Texas, graduating high school in 1934. She married a year later and worked to keep her young family during the war. Shortly after her husband returned, they divorced. Mary Kay became a salesperson for direct sales business Stanley Home Products. She hosted parties to encourage people to buy household items. She was good at it and in 1952 was hired by another direct sales company, World Gifts. There she spent over a decade at the company before she finally quit 
or retired as she described it, after watching yet another man whom she had trained get promoted above her at a far higher salary that he earned. Ash decided to write a book for women in the male-dominated world. The mythology here is lovely. She sat down and made two lists on a yellow legal pad. One list had the companies that she worked for and what they had and, and had done right. The other had the things she thought they could have done better. Looking at the list, she realized that she inadvertently created a marketing plan for a dream company. This was one that could give women every opportunity to achieve personal and financial success. So with a small investment from her savings and help from her younger son, she formed Mary Kay Cosmetics in 1963, just months after the early death of her second husband. She opened her first store in Dallas. The business was profitable in its first year and nearly made nearly $1 million in revenue in the second year. As with her previous experience, do what you know do what you know is a feature of many successful entrepreneurs. She sold her cosmetics at home parties and other events. Sales representatives termed consultants bought the product from Mary Kay at wholesale prices and then sold to their customers at retail prices. They also earned commissions from recruiting new consultants. However, this is the key for tonight. She innovated the way she organized her sales represent representatives and notably in the way she treated them. Her incentive program and avoidance of traditional sales territories were consistent with her fundamental belief in the golden rule, treat others as you would want to be treated yourself. She also applied the motto, God first, family second, and career third, and emphasized the importance of a healthy balance between work and home life, making her business a highly attractive place to work for women. Ash wrote a number of books which we can learn about from her people-centered people philosophy on business. One is called The Mary Kay Way, Timeless Principles from America's, America's Greatest Woman Entrepreneur. Her, fir, her first book expanded and republished published in 2008. Also, Miracles Happen, The Life and Timeless Principles of the Founder, Mary Kay Incorporated. Her 1981 biography reprinted under this title in 2003. And then Mary Kay, You Can Have It All, Practical Advice for Doing Well by Doing Good. Her last book from, her last book from, uh, from 1995, and it's currently out of print. Her business went from strength to strength, earning itself and Ash, who married Mel Ash in 1966, numerous awards and honors. She remained active in Mary Kay Cosmetics until suffering a stroke in 1996. Mary Kay Ash died in 2001 on Thanksgiving Day, as a matter of fact. What Mary Kay taught us, her books provided a wealth of wisdom about respecting and engaging women for whom you work with. It's easy to think of her um, aphorisms as easy cliches. The reality is there's nothing easy about doing the basics well and consistently, and Ash did exactly that. So he lists eight things that she did, her, his favorite lessons that he learned from reading all about her, okay? This is someone not in Mary Kay. Number one, the golden rule. Treat others as you'd want them to treat you. Ash made this the foundation of her business and management philosophy. Number two, praise people to success. She profoundly understood the motivating impact and, recon and recognition at the workplace. Number three, the invisible sign. Ash imagined everyone she met was wearing an invisible sign which she could read that says, make me feel important, and she did. Number four, build with people. Not only did she believe that people are the company's greatest asset, which she used to say all the time, but she prioritized developing those people and promoting from within the business. And you know, that is also true even in corporate, like you'll see people that have been in Mary Kay corporate for 25 years. And they have, they started out, Sean Key was one of them, that he's one of our vice presidents. And he started out in the distribution centers in the um, box and products. Isn't that something? Um, number five, be a follow through person. Ash thought it was vital for people to feel they can count on you, especially as a leader. Number six, the speed of the leader is the speed of the game. Lead from the front, roll your sleeves up, and get stuck in. The pace a leader set is the pace of the organization. People will support that which they help to direct, which they help to create. If you want to avoid 
people resisting change, you need to involve them in design and decision-making processes. And then number eight, less stress. Ash's commitment to work-life balance was underpinned by a belief that stress stifles creativity. So I thought that was really great. Um, little just one page fun facts about Mary Kay, the company. And I think if you like read that and could pop out some of those um, facts about the company while you're doing your Mary Kay parties or while you're talking about the business, I just think it's great for people like us in the company to know where we came from, know our history. And you know, sometimes at church and other things in schools, they want you to know the history, even in schools, like right now they, they in Georgia, they, you have to take a class, Georgia history. They want to, you to know that Oglethorpe, you know, was the one that founded Georgia, you know? And so we had to learn all about Georgia history and wherever you live, I'm sure you learned all about that. And so this is Mary Kay history. So I wanna challenge you guys to, I'm gonna put that link on there, maybe print it out and study it, but to, Grab that autobiography and read it about Mary Kay. Read her story so that you know a little bit more about it. Now, even on the Mary Kay website, when it shows the values of the company, when you look it up, MaryKay.com, and you click on our values, one of the first things on there, it says Mary Kay coined this term. Uh, well, first it talked about the go-give spirit. It said Mary Kay coined this term to describe the selfless pursuit of the greater good, a dynamic team spirit of helping others found throughout our halls of our offices around the globe. The rewards of lending a helping hand to others or being the recipient of an act of kindness leads to an atmosphere of trust and caring relationship. And then number two on here is the golden rule. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. This tried and true principle has stood the test of time and it is the cornerstone of our leadership practice rules. We also believe an atmosphere of teamwork, respect for others, and fostering relationships built upon trust, honesty, and caring. And so um, I thought it was pretty cool to hear the sermon today on the Golden Rule, and I want to talk to you just a little bit about that. And it's an, uh, something that I had not thought about the way he talked about it. And then we're just going to end with some ways that we can put the Golden Rule into practice in our Mary Kay business. Okay, so the, tonight is not really about selling or recruiting, and yet it is. Okay, it's how we do it. Uh, so um, the first thing that we he did talk about this morning or this morning was the verse of course and in matthew 7 12 you know do unto others as you would have them do unto you that is kind of paraphrased in matthew 7 12 what, according to what version you read in this was in um the uh, new king james version just says therefore whatever you want men to do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets and so then he talked about other religions and philosophers have also used this concept confucius actually said what you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. And he said, you know, Jesus, he had it in a positive way. Confucius had it in, it's kind of more of a negative way. And, and this is how he described it, which I thought this is a great analogy. He said, the second one, the negative one says, if you see a guy stranded on the side of the road, don't run over him. <laughs> okay, don't, don't run over him, all right? And but then the first one is like if you see a guy straight on the side of the road, don't run over him, instead, stop and help him. Okay, and so the then they kind of broke down the verse. So it says, What, um, whatever you want men to do to you, um, or others to do to you, okay, also do to them. Want is what you want, and that is not based on how people treat you, their service to you has nothing to do with it. It's how you want to be treated. So think about that when you are out and about um, and how the golden rule, it's easy to treat somebody awesome when they're treating you awesome, but not so much when they're treating you terrible, right? But that's not what the golden rule says. It's you treat them how you would want to be treated, okay? And then the second one he brought out is whatever. It says whatever you want men to do to you, do, um, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophet. So whatever, that includes everything. <laughs> you can't leave out stuff, everything, okay? And then others, do unto others. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. This is not limited to any particular group. This doesn't mean just like do 
do unto your neighbor or your family member or your best friend, um, you know, people that you like. It's everyone. Okay. Um, and then at the end of the verse, it says, for this is the law and the prophet. It's, um, it's not a um, suggestion. In the Christian um, world, it is really, is part of God's teaching. It's a commandment, not a suggestion. So as a Christian, if you are one, you know, this is how the Lord has taught us to live anyway. Mary Kay was a Christian, and so she put this philosophy in her company. And it has been very successful, okay? Um, and then the, the, the beginning of this, in Matthew, it says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, also do to them. Um, therefore means, like, you have to go back. What was he saying right before he said this? And the verses right before he said this was that all of you are familiar with is, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And y'all can go back and read that. But so it's hard sometimes to use the golden rule when it's people that are irritating or people that you don't like or people that are doing you wrong, right? So ask, ask God, pray God that he will continually help you be able to do that for others. Seek to be a servant in your life and knock on God's door for help. And, you know, he, um, our um, preacher talked about this uh, he gave us an example. He said, could you help your opponent if, when, knowing that it was going to cause you to lose a ball game? And I'm thinking, like, first thing he said, I'm like, mm, no, because <laughs> I like to win, right? So then he told the story, and it was about this um, girls softball team. Uh, it was a college softball team, and they were in the playoffs, and um, this team was behind by one run. I think by two runs, as a matter of fact, behind by two runs. Well, this girl got up there and she hit a home run and she was so excited. She had never hit a home run before in her whole career and by the bases were loaded. So by this, they were going to win the game. Like she was the superstar of the game. And so she hit the home run. She started running down the bases. She, you know, swung by first, went to second, and she realized she did not, you know, the coaches, everybody was screaming that she, her foot didn't hit the um, first base. Like you have to tag every base, even when you hit a home run, right? So she turned around, went all the way back to first base to tag it. And when she got up to it, somehow she fell, twisted her ankle and um, tore her ACL. And she was in excruciating pain and could not get up. So the coaches and some of the people from the stands, they were all going to come out and, you know, tend to her. And the umpires were standing there on stage, on, not on stage, on the field. And they had their arms straight out saying, nope, nope, get off the field. Because um, if they wanted the runs to count, she had to touch each base herself. And um, they said, well, could we have, um, could we have tagged a runner for her? And or could they come help? They said, nope, she cannot be helped. They said, could, could we tag a runner for her? Can we let someone else run for her? They said, yes. However, you only get to count one run, which they would not win. So they were all like, you know, trying to figure out something, but the, you know, it's the rules of the ball game. Cause you know, and so, so one of the players on the opposite team, the opponent said, what if I helped her? Can I help her? And the, the umpire was like, well, you're the opponent. You can do whatever you want to do. There's no rules for that. So he, he threw a picture on the screen, and it had these two girls from the opposing team picked up and carried this girl who could not walk. They hit the home run, and at every plate, lowered her down, and she touched it with her foot like, you know, touched it with her foot every single, all the way to the home plate. And of course, it made them win the game and they were the, cha the champions. Well, the rest of the story <laughs> is that that girl, her name was Mallory, that asked, she ended up winning, they call it the SB Award for ESPN for the uh, sportsmanship, uh, for the one, someone who has like the highest sportsmanship. And then four years later, she landed a job as the coach of that team that she helped win. 
it's just a great story. I mean, who would do that? And then he also talked about the girl that was he hurt that was hurt. He said she could have refused the help. He said it probably to this day she'd be probably just thinking, why can't I get around? You know that you know beating herself up for not going around, but she accepted the help, and so everybody was blessed. You know, I thought it was, I thought it was a great story, and so. I want y'all to think about, have you ever heard about the bracelets that we used to all wear that said WWJD? You know, what would Jesus do? And then years ago when Mary Kay was still living, we used to say WWMKD. What would Mary Kay do? <laughs> In any given situation. And I can remember many times as a young director, you know, I would come up with some kind of conflict in my unit or conflict with another director or conflict with a customer or a, a consultant or an adoptee. And then I would say, what would Mary Kay do? Like we could call and ask her at that point, you know, she was still living, but you know, what would Mary Kay do? What would Jesus do? What is the golden rule? And you know, Mary Kay, she was so smart to incorporate this philosophy in the company from the very beginning. And she really lived out what she taught. You could see videos, and we we heard stories too of her. You know, when she would go to the big conventions, and and even in hotels, big hotel rooms, they couldn't take her to the front, through the front, and walk in the you know the beginning to go up to speak because there's so many people who would just be on her. She'd never get to the front, and um, so they would take her through the back, through the kitchen, and she would go through the back, and she would always speak to the cooks and the servers, and people washing dishes, and the janitors, and she would speak to every one of them as she was going in, and um, she would say, "How are you doing today?" And they and I always have a video of her doing this even, and they go, "Fine, fine." And then um, she goes, no, you're great. And she said, if I was at an event where it was like a five day event, like career conference or, or when we like seminar in Dallas, she said, by the end of the week, she goes, their whole attitude of the people that work there would change. I would come back, she said, I would come back through and I go, how are you doing today? They go, we're great, Mary Kay. She said, the enthusiasm went up. She said, you just wouldn't believe it, you know? And um, she always had, um, when her husband was living, he used to kind of escort her in and out. And then after that, there would be staff people and they could not get Mary Kay to leave after conferences because she would stand and wait for every single person to come up and get their picture with Mary Kay or talk to them. And she did not rush through anybody. And they say she would stand for hours, like two or three hours and talk to every single person. And um, you know, this was how she, did the golden rule because she remembered, she said when she worked for World Gifts and um, she wanted to talk to the queen of sales and she'd want a beautiful um, alligator bag. And she went, um, no, excuse me. Well, she did, she did have this queen that she wanted this alligator bag, but she wanted to talk to the president of the company because she was going to tell him that she was going to be a queen, the queen that next year. And so she said, I waited very, very in a long line. She goes, he was waiting. She goes, but so was I. I waited for two hours to get to talk to him or however long. She says, and I got up there for my time to talk to him. She said, and he looked at me and then he looked behind me to see who else was behind me and barely paid attention to what I said. And she said, I thought right there, well, if I ever get in a place where I someone is waiting to talk to me, then I will make sure I look them in the eye and I'm not worried about who's behind them and I'm gonna give them that respect. She said, cause my feet hurt too. <laughs> and so and she's always been that way, you know? And so I was thinking about just three ways we can apply the golden rule service in our businesses this week. And as you are building your Mary Kay story, you know, because you want to build a good reputation in Mary Kay. Um, and I know when you're newer, you think, People don't care. People don't know. They do know and they do care. And if you're in there a long time, believe me, believe me, you're building a reputation and you want it to be stellar. You want it to be something you can be proud of. Not that you're never going to make a mistake, but if you learn some of these principles at the beginning of your Mary Kay career or at any point, and then you start putting them in practice, it sets you apart from other people. And it's just the right thing to do. So first of all, golden rule service or golden rule when it comes to recruiting. Let's talk about that real quick first. So what do I mean by this? First of all, is when you're, when you're trying to recruit someone or you see someone you want to talk to about becoming a Mary Kay consultant, one of the first things you're going to ask is, does she already have a beauty consultant? Is she buying Mary Kay from somebody? And if she is, you want to refer that girl back to her beauty consultant. Why? 
because that is what you would want to have happen to you. You look at your customers and you, if one of your customers got offered the Mary Kay opportunity, yes, you should have done it, but let's say you didn't for whatever reason, then you would want that girl to refer her back to you. That's the right thing to do, right? That's golden rule, all right? Um, when you do recruit, you will wanna encourage your team members, especially during the first six weeks of the business, because that is the time where they start to doubt themselves and they start to think, why? Did I do this or what was I thinking? <laughs> what was I thinking? What did I think I could sell this stuff? I'm just sending it all back. You know, I mean, like you that fear sets in. And so, you know, at, if, as you're recruiting, remember that and be that encourager to your new recruits. Stay close with them, especially their first six, seven weeks in the business. You will want to take her um, or have her meet you and ride together to the sales meeting. Uh, women don't love to go places alone especially the first time okay they don't like to go to the bathroom alone like if you are wherever they'll go you gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> so they can walk out together that is just something about women men do not do that you know brad doesn't look around the table and go hey man you gotta go it'd be weird but women we always do that so with your new team member maybe you can meet right before the meeting somewhere and go in together or pick her up if you could, you know, according to where you live. That would just make her feel more comfortable. She's your new team member. You're going to bring her in and introduce her to the director and all of your Mary Kay girlfriends and make her feel really, really special, you know, because she's going to feel like an outsider at the very first time. And, and she's going to decide that night if she's going to keep coming with you or if she's not. Okay. Um, you may want to take her with you to help um, to go get leads. Maybe you're really good at chatter booking and talking to other people. Maybe you could take her with you and show her how you do it. Um, let her watch you make some phone calls and hear what you say. Okay. Let her watch you, you know, coach your hostesses, maybe get together, do it together with each other. Um, let her watch you do a party. Let her be your assistant that night and go with you and show her how to do it. You know, um, offer to insist, uh, assist in any way you can because you want her to be a success and by you helping her that's think about you when you were new some of you it hadn't been that long right how did you want to be treated and so what i'll tell you what people don't want to be felt like is a number and as someone who treats their recruits like a number you're going to lose every one of them and they're going to leave mary kay with a bad taste in their mouth this is what i mean by that you got a goal you're trying to earn whatever, the destination red cruise, you're trying to earn a free car, you're trying to get in your red jacket, whatever. And you're calling them, 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 and then they finally sign up, <laughs> okay? And then as soon as they sign up, then you start, you talk to them about their inventory and they get active and then you go to the next person and you don't even call them. You don't check on them. You don't see if they got their first party book. You're not, you're like, they're a number. You got them and now you're done. That's the worst thing you can do with recruiting. The absolute worst, okay? So you got to call them just as many times as you did when you were trying to recruit them now that they're in to encourage them, okay? And then number two is golden rule when it comes to selling. Um, just like recruiting, you meet someone, you want to book her, one of the first things you want to ask is, hey, do you have the Mary Kay Beauty Consultant? And if they say yes, you refer her back, okay? You refer her back to her. Um, um, you want to always offer the money back guarantee to your customers when they at a party. And if they decide to take you up on that for whatever reason, okay, Mary Kay doesn't care what the reason is, and you shouldn't either, then you want to do it with a good attitude because you said there's a money back guarantee. You said at your parties that they can, you know, you'll exchange it for something else or you will refund them the money. So if you cop an attitude when someone wants to return or exchange, that is a reflection on you like, oh yeah, they say that, but they give you a hard time. It's just like if you have, you know, a jacket that you bought and the buttons were missing and you took it back and you're trying to return it at Macy's 
and they give you a really hard time about it and go, well, I, these buttons were on there when you left. And you're like, sorry, ma'am, I've, I've only worn it one time and they just fell off and they just kept on. I mean, what it would do, even if later she gave you the money back, it would make you say, I'm not shopping at Macy's because they give you a hard time. if They don't honor what they say. Right. And so that's what will happen to you. So you want to just, if you can't satisfy her, some people just can't be satisfied. And maybe you just feel like she's ripping you off. Like she bought it, she used it for a party and then she returned it all. Okay, let's like be those people that buy dresses, hide the tags and take them back the next day. <laughs> okay, maybe she did that to you. You know what? Don't worry about it. You do the right thing. You treat her like you would want to be treated, even though she's not doing the right thing. It's hard. You may have to pray about that one, right? Ask, seek, knock. <laughs> okay. Um, what else for the customers? Offer her samples or free gifts with all her orders, um, all her reorders. Uh, call to check on her every two day, two, every two days after the first sale, and then two weeks, and every two months at least. Um, keep her informed of all the new products. Offer her the career opportunity. Okay. Don't don't not offer it to her because. What, aren't you glad somebody offered it to you, right? Put her on your preferred customer program where she gets the books every, um, you know, eight weeks. I mean, or so, whichever, whenever Mary Kay does it, you know, put her on the mailing list. I would want to get a book if I was a customer, right? Um, and these are just a few of the things you could do with your customers. Uh, and then lastly, number three, you go to rule when it comes to your sisters in Mary Kay, your sister consultants, your sister directors, okay? So what are some ways that we could do this? You know, number one would be at a meeting or seminar, career conference, your fall advance, anytime you're gathered as a group with other Mary Kay consultants, you want to be that girl that speaks to everybody. You want to be that girl that tries to remember the new people's name, that goes up and introduces yourself at the sales meetings and say, hey, I don't think we've met, or I think I've seen you last week, or, you know, and who are you, who'd you come with, we're so glad you're here, you know, this is for the guests, and also for the sister consultants, really, when you talk to a guest of a sister consultant, you can't even imagine how, how that makes the consultant feel, that you took your time to come speak to her guests, that's a big deal, you guys. So, but also speak to them, new people that come in, you know, they are, they're checking out the meeting and it's not just about the girl that brought them. It's about the whole meeting. And if there are friendly women at the meeting that treated her kindly with respect and came up and talked to her and made her feel comfortable and talked to her after the meeting and assisted her in any way possible, that consultant is going to come back. If she's treated rudely, no one speaks to her. No one even knows who she is. She leaves not, you know, it just was an unfriendly meeting. You'll never see her again. And you won't, and she, you won't ever know why. You're like, I don't know why my recruit don't go to the meetings. Okay. Um, be an encourager um, to your sister consultants. Not a complainer. Not a complainer. I mean, you know, it's the worst when you're at a meeting and you're trying to, have a great meeting to be excited. And then you, you know, you're lined up with people going, Oh my gosh, let me tell you what someone so did. Oh, she did that. I can't believe this. And always either before or after the meeting have something negative to say about somebody else, kind of like the tattletale at the meeting. You know what? Just like your director, just keep that to yourself unless it's really something important that needs to be handled. You know what I mean? So um, don't be the complainer. Instead, be the encourager help someone. If you feel like she, there's some things that she needs some help with, you know, maybe she's so disorganized. She didn't bring half her stuff and she's got three guests. You know what? Go back there and help her. Give her some of your stuff and then just say, hey, let me help you organize your things. Let's make a list of the things you need for the meeting. It don't matter if she's not your recruit. I mean, that's just a few little things you could do to help others. And what will happen is you will have more friends, <laughs> And people are going to just love you and they're going to say, I love her. She is the best, you know? Um, and I, you know, I'll just tell you about one girl in our unit, my unit that goes above and beyond. And this is Linda Wingett. Linda comes to my sales meetings and she brings, she, we do raffles to help pay for the meeting room. And so she's just started bringing raffle gifts on her own. She goes, Hey, I brought some raffle gifts. And then she turns right around and buys tickets 
to win her own raffle gift smack. <laughs> and then she brings the most delicious plates. And a lot of my unit members do this too. But you know, and then if she wins her own gifts, then she'll go give it to someone else in the room. And she is always trying to encourage and, you know, just be that person. And, and everybody loves Linda because of how she acts at the meeting. And it's so heartwarming. Um, and, you know, one people that let, and I have a lot of women in my unit. In fact, some of my directors from other areas are like, your unit, they're, they're like awesome. I go, I know, <laughs> they're the best <laughs> because they help each other. You know, lots of adoptees, it's just really, it's just so fun because they're so giving and they're always helping. And um, it just makes it a joy to be around them. And you want to be that person that you're a joy to be around, you know? Um, so I just thought tonight, I just wanted to talk about that about living and working with the golden rule in your Mary Kay business. It's how our founder set our business apart from other businesses. Other businesses do not have philosophies like this. They just don't, you guys. They don't. It's dog eat dog. And, you know, it's, um, you know, <laughs> I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, but it's not in a positive way, right? So that's what I got for y'all tonight. And hopefully you'll think about some of these things this week. And when you get in a situation that's tough, just go, what would Mary Kay do? What would Jesus do? What does the golden rule say? And you'll always have the right answer. Okay. So, Jana, I'll hello, let you hello. take you back. <laughs> All right. You know what? Uh, you know, the funny thing is that uh, Paul and I just watched a whole movie on, it was called, I think, What Would Jesus, what would Jesus Do? Ah! <laughs> Talk about confirmation. You know, we watched that this last week together and, um, and it was really a whole movie about, you know, this guy came to this town and everybody was doing naughty things and nobody was giving or loving or caring. And, and then they all, you know, he said, what would Jesus do you guys? And, and he was a homeless man. Anyway, it, it's, uh, it's on prime if y'all want to watch that. But, um, but it really, it really did sink into me that, you know, we have to be we have to be that person that's nice to everyone. And so, you know, I just think I posted on our unit page this week. You guys, I challenge you to smile at every person that you meet. Smile at everyone. Say hello to everyone. Wave at everyone. It doesn't matter whether they wave back. It doesn't matter. We can't control other people, but we can control ourselves. And sometimes somebody just needs that person to smile. And that might change their day. And changing their day might change their children's day. And changing their children's day might change their level of confidence. And so we just we just don't know. So I love that. Everything was so good, Cleet. I'm going to keep it short. Um, love, you know, tell, tell Mary Kay's story. That's so powerful because people are more loyal to a company, like to a product that they know more about the company and they know more about the founder. And, you know, one of the things that I always like to tell about uh, Mary Kay is that, you know, Mary Kay had a marketing plan before she ever had a product. And that's a sure way that, you know, she did this to help women. So we know that, you know, this was not about making money. This wasn't about her getting rich. This was about actually her changing lives. And so, you know what, but go out and I encourage you tell her story to, to everybody. So that would require, you got to book appointments to tell that story. So go out and do it, you guys. Let's have a strong end of the month. Yes. Thank you, Jana. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. um, let's see. I had well, Miss Rosie on here. Let me find you. Here we are. Okay, Rosie. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. I had to move to the bathroom so it could be quiet. <laughs> Wherever you need to do stuff, right? I mean, yeah. I, I just want you to know I'm not doing anything in here. I'm just sitting in here, but I'm not doing anything but talking. Um, anyway, um, something, you know, when you were talking about reading the Mary Kay autobiography, I think it's very important, at least from my experience, to read it when you start, but to keep reading it. Don't just read it once and never do it again, because I can tell you just after three or four years how it meant one thing to me when I read it at the beginning of my Mary Kay career, maybe made some, it made something else kind of in the middle. And then I just read it again. Well, probably it's about, about maybe about six months ago, but at each time, you know, it's meant something different or I've caught something different or maybe I read the same thing, but because I'm in a different place in my career, it means something different to me. So 
don't just read it once and, and forget about it. That, that's one thing I would definitely encourage everybody to do. And, and I just wanted to say, I mean, I think I've told you this before, Cleta, but my best memory, my first seminar, um, when I was brand new, um, I came to that seminar, um, the 31st of July, and I think I met you, it might have been that day or the day after. And when I found out I was a director, I had just made, just finished. And um, you made me feel so welcome. And, you know, you introduced me to every single one of your directors. And after that, you know, well, first of all, let me back up. Jan, of course, took me under her wing, introduced me to all her people, which made me feel very welcome. But of all the people, you know, you were, you were probably the director I remembered most from that seminar because you were so warm and inviting and you made me feel like I just wasn't somebody else. I was just, I was important. And even though I was new and you didn't know who the heck I was, that I was important enough for you to stop and say hello and talk to you and your other directors, your directors are just like that. And that's, to me, that's an example of, monk, I don't want to say monkey see, monkey do, <laughs> about um, follow the leader kind of thing. And you have taught that so well to your leaders and they certainly exemplify what you have done. So, and you know, my, yeah. my immediate mentor is also the same way. And I, I feel like even before I was in Mary Kay, I try to be friendly and it's just kind of, I think for some people, it's just a natural thing to do to smile at people and things like that. But you know, it, you're right. It is harder to smile and be nice to some people more than others. And I think that's where it takes that greater effort. And, you know, sometimes it's hard. Um, you, know, you kind of have to take a deep breath and grin and bear it and, and just kind of put yourself out there, but remember to be kind. And it, it's hard to do sometimes, but it's sure worth it. So anyway, I know I've said it before, but I just want to thank you for that because four years later, it still, it still means a lot to me. It really does. And I've told other people in my unit about you and that's kind of how they know you. So Aww. thank you for that. Thank you, Rosie. You're the best. <laughs> you know, um, I just remember what it feels like when you're a new director, when you're a new person. And I don't know, I, I just think I've, that's one of the things I've always tried to do is connect people and help people. And it, you know, it's funny. It's not even just like, a new director like you were, Rosie, because even on the top director trip, um, you know, there are women that were there the first time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, women get insecurities no matter where you are, even on a top director trip. Like you think, wow, you know, but they're like, oh, do I fit in on the top director trip? You know what I'm saying? saying? And so it's mm -hmm. always nice. And I remember on my first trip, those women that were so kind to me on that first top director trip, it made me feel like I belonged, made me feel like I was accepted. I was part of the group, you know, and so anyway, there's so many opportunities in Mary Kay to pass that feeling on, and so I thank you, girl, um, so much. I'm so glad you're a part of us. Okay, um, Sayla, let me unmute you. Okay, Sayla. Can you hear me? I can. Okay, great. Um, what a great, great call, and Rosie is right. Um, you have definitely, you know, you have led by the golden rule Cleta and just everybody that knows you appreciates um, your friendliness and how no matter if they're the newest director or like you say somebody that's on the top director trip you know you are just so welcoming and um, of course you are my senior director so I have learned from you and I do know that um, when you use the golden rule in your business I've seen it in my personal business over and over those situations that come up and there's a question you think oh I might could get by with this or get by with that but if you do the right things I like to say you can never go wrong doing the right thing um, if you do the right thing and use the golden rule then you not only are planting seeds for your future business but later on it those situations have a way of coming back around to you and you never have to second guess what you did in the situation and um i uh i just appreciate that so much about mary Kay and her setting that into motion at the very beginning so that we can all have businesses of integrity and um really businesses that let jesus light shine through us so yeah it's the golden rule is a great thing 
So true. So true, Sayla. And you know, um, if you guys are ever, if you ever run into difficult people, which you, you know you're going to, we all do, right? I want to tell you something that I have learned through experience is look for something that you can love about them and get to know them a little bit better. Because so many times in my life with Mary Kay and then in just my life, there'll be someone that maybe perhaps gets on my nerves. <laughs> and then I think, well, you probably get on somebody's nerves too, Cleta. But anyway, um, and then I get to know them and I get to understand them and why they act the way they do. And that very person, I ended up, I end up thinking, oh, I just really love her, you know, and I don't, the Lord took away that feeling of how they used to get on my nerves. And, um, and it's just impatience, you know, but that's ask the Lord to help you and then seek, you know, seek ways to be a servant and then not. And so, you know, he'll help you with all that. So anyway, um, I believe that's all the directors that are on here. If not, they called in instead of boxed in, but, um, we're going to go ahead and, uh, close the meeting tonight because I got a, I am kind of packed, but I got a lot, a few things to do before I go to bed and get up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> and get to the airport by five. Maybe I should get up at 345. Anyway, um, you guys have a great week. Um, I will be posting. I did buy a little Wi-Fi package, so I'm not posting a little bit too while I'm vacationing with all the other Mary Kay girls, but I can't wait to spend some time with everybody. And there's a lot of people already in Miami ready to get on the boat in the morning. And so, um, I did hear a little secret. Y'all want to know right before I go to bed? Mm -hmm. I am going to stop the recording. <laughs>